Welcome to another RMS support tutorial. In this lesson, we will take a look at an overview of prime contractors, the prime contractor module, how to add a prime contractor to the district, how to add information to the prime contractor module, and how to add and assign a contractor administrator. Now let's get started. To add a new prime contractor to the district, navigate to the district office, then click the prime contractors module. In this menu, you may add, edit, or delete prime contractors for the district. Click on the Add button. A dialog box will appear. Fill out the name of the new prime contractor, then press OK. This location will allow us to add all the necessary information about our new prime contractor. Prime contractors are uniquely identified by its DUNS number. The DUNS number allows RMS to automatically add prime contractors to the list from a contract or add it here in this module. For a prime contractor to use RMS3, it must be listed here with the contractor administrator identified. The prime contractor ID is a sequentially numbered identifier that is automatically created by RMS. The first two characters represents the office's CFMS code. The DUNS number, as mentioned before, is a unique nine-digit identifier assigned to businesses by Dun & Bradstreet. For a contractor to be awarded a government contract, it must have a DUNS number. NAICS code refers to the North American Industry Classification System, which is the standard used by federal statistical agencies in classifying businesses establishments for the purpose of collecting, analyzing, and publishing statistical data related to the U.S. business economy. Although some businesses may be registered with more than one NAICS code, this is not a required entry in RMS. The contract short name is the abbreviated name of the contractor. This specific field is limited to 36 characters. Cage code or commercial and government entity is a five-character identifier for companies doing business with the federal government. Home address information may be updated in the section below. A warning message will show if a contract is new and doesn't have a contract administrator. Each prime contractor should have at least one administrator. The contractor's administrator is the person responsible for managing the contractor's staff and contracts in RMS. He or she must be the first person added to the contractor's staff list. This must be done by the government's district administrator. The contractor will not be able to access their contracts in RMS until the government's district administrator links the prime contractor to a contract. This can be done in the prime contractor module for the contract. Click the back button to save the changes. To verify the new addition, you may search for the name of the prime contractor in the search field. We can see our newly created prime contractor has been created. We can double click this to make any necessary changes. Click the back button to return to the selection menu, then click the contract selection button to choose a contract. Under the administration tab, choose the prime contractor module. This menu will allow us to enter all of the contract level prime contractor information as necessary. One thing to note is that any information entered in the Prime Contractor Contract module will not change or update information on the District Office Prime Contractor module. At the top, you could also choose the Add Prime Contractor from Entered Info button to quickly add a Prime Contractor record to the District Office list with limited information in lieu of using the District Office module method that we previously demonstrated. It is recommended that after using this quick add method, you go back to the District Office Prime Contractor module to fill out the remaining information. However, in this example, since we have already created the prime contractor record in the district office prime contractor module with the full range of information, we will click cancel on this screen and proceed to linking the prime contractor entry we created. If we click the blue not set tile, we can choose from the list of prime contractors in the district. In this case, we will search for our newly created prime contractor and double click to add. A warning will populate if there are no administrators added to the contractor staff. Click OK. If we click Copy Duns and Contractor Information, this will pull all the information typed for the prime contractor. We will search for our contractor's name and double click to add. We can see that the Duns, NAICS, and Home Office address information has been updated accordingly. If we click the Prevent Contractor Mode Access button, this option will prevent all access for users in the contractor mode for this contract. This is intended for situations where there is a dispute, termination, or other reasons to prevent access to the contract. For this demonstration, we will close this box. The Send Mail To dropdown allows the option to choose where to send mailing information. The Payee Office information is entered into CFUMS and then downloaded into RMS. Click on the blue box to set the Payee Office address. The payment address will only show up after you have successfully completed your first CFUMS download into the project. If the address is not found and the information has been entered into CFUMS for at least 24 to 72 hours, you will need to contact CFUMS support to determine the cause. 
Since this contract is not set up in CFUMS, there will be no PE office information added. All other contractor information should be entered in the appropriate fields below. As a reminder, the information entered here will not update the district office record of the prime contractor. The information entered in this module will only update the contract level record of the prime contractor. In order for a contractor to access the contract, they must also be added to the contractor staff. This can be done by the government district administrator or the contractor's administrator. To add the contractor administrator, click the contractor staff tab, then click the add button. We will now be prompted to enter the email address associated with the contractor's RMS account. Enter the registered email of the contractor here, then click OK. Now we will enter the rest of the information. Enter their first and last name and choose whether or not this user will have administrator rights. Administrator rights for contractor staff it grants all permission to the user. This includes the ability to set permissions for other users and to create other administrators without government intervention. Since this user will be identified as our contractor administrator, we will check the box accordingly. Click the back button to save the changes. As we can see, our newly created staff administrator, linked slash logged in, does not reflect accordingly. This information will not change until the contractor has successfully logged into the contract. If the contractor has successfully logged in and the information does not show, click the back button to save the changes and return to the contract menu. Then head back to the prime contractor staff menu. As we can see, the information has been updated accordingly. In summary, we discussed how to add a prime contractor to the district, how to add a prime contractor to a specific contract, as well as how to add and verify a contractor administrator. We hope you found this information helpful, and thank you for watching.